Hello everyone, I'm Zain Hajali, and I'll be presenting Spatial Models and Masks in Indoor Analysis for the Spread of COVID-19. My co-author is Dr. Gabriel Weiner. So just as an outline of the presentation, I'll first be going over an introduction uh, to why this type of modeling is important and what we're looking at specifically. I'll then talk about some background and introduce some related work. I'll describe the proposal and the experimental setup before moving on to the results of the simulations and the conclusion. So for a quick introduction before getting into it, why do we want to model the, the viral particle spread or the spread of viral particles spatially? Well, the ability to model and visualize the spread of particles can help when identifying solutions for buildings, like maximum occupancy or sufficient ventilation. Because of this, we must also look at the impact of face masks on the viral spread since masks have been a big, big part of our lives for the past two years. The World Health Organization has been recommending their use and governing bodies around the world have mandated the use of face masks in indoor public spaces due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Studying the use of different face masks at the same time also reflects real world scenarios, since we cannot assume that everyone will be wearing the same type of face mask at all times. So in modeling viral spread, we come across a few problems, one of which is overlooking a type of face mask that is being recommended by the World Health Organization. The recommendation is to use one of three types of masks according to the use case and the susceptibility of the individual. The recommended masks are surgical masks, cotton masks, or N95 respirators. There's also a high chance that the wearer of an N95 mask might not fit it or wear it correctly. The other problem is that not all individuals wear the same face masks. So we have scenarios in the real world where two people in an indoor setting can be wearing different mask types. So we need a model that incorporates all these different factors. And that's our contribution for today. We present a cell devs model for rapidly prototyping viral particle spread and its effect uh, and the effect of uh, various face masks. So talking a little bit about previous work in the field, we know that modeling infection is widely studied using the susceptible infected recovered model, describing the number of people in each of the three states at a point in time. A susceptible person can move to the infected state and an infected person can move to the recovered state where they cannot get reinfected in the simplest implementation of the model. Another method used to simulate the spread of COVID-19 is a Monte Carlo-based algorithm which can incorporate the effects of lockdown patterns and social distancing regulations. When looking at studies exploring the impact of the use of face masks, we find widespread consensus that the masks assist in diminishing the spread of uh, airborne viruses. Specifically, surgical masks and N95 respirators have been shown to decrease infection rates of the H1N1 virus during the 2009 pandemic. More recently, a simulation of 18 months of an epidemic using a modified SIR model found that an increase in the use of face masks significantly decreases the spread of the virus within the community. Looking at the graph uh, here from that study, we can see that three months of a simulation where 80% of the population of New York is masked, each of the different colored lines uh, represents the cumulative deaths over time at a certain mask effectiveness. Comparing no masks at the black line to 50 or 80% mask effectiveness at these two lines here, we see that there is a significant drop in the cumulative deaths. Other teams studied the efficiency of different types of face masks in inhibiting the transmission of aerosols containing COVID-19 viral particles. They set up a transmission simulator using two mannequin heads facing each other. One of the heads simulated breathing and coughing by emitting a mist containing viral particles. The other was connected to a viral particle collection unit and artificial ventilator mimicking a steady breathing rate. They were then able to attach different types of masks to the mannequin heads and in this way tested the shed and efficiency of each of the masks. The shed being the percentage of viral particles that can pass through the mask from the viral particle spreader out into the environment and the efficiency being the percentage of the viral particles that can pass through the mask from the environment into the receiving mannequin head. In this study, 
All masks recommended by the World Health Organization were studied. Cotton and surgical masks as well as N95 respirators. When looking at N95 respirators, the researchers took care to test both well-fitted respirators and incorrectly fitted respirators. The study also established that no mask is capable of completely protecting the wearer from inhaling viral particles, even when fitted correctly. For the application of modeling indoor spaces, a number of methods have been used. Teams have used a grid graph based model to study spatial events in indoor environments. One of the most popular models has been uh, cellular automata, which are discrete models made up of cells in a grid where each cell has its own state and can be represented as a finite state machine. Cellular automata have been used to model movement of crowds and their behavior in an environment. They've also been used to model smoke diffusion and propagation and the effects on crowd behavior indoors during an evacuation scenario. By combining the discrete event system specification or DEVs and cellular automata, we can use cell DEVs to build discrete event cell spaces. A cell devs model is made up of atomic models, where each atomic model is represented as a cell in an n-dimensional lattice of cells as seen in the figure here. The complete cell space is a coupled devs model made by combining the individual atomic cells. This allows us to keep the modularity and other advantages of the devs formalism while still working in a multi-dimensional environment and taking, to, taking into account the states of the neighboring cells as when using cellular automata. Cell devs models have also been used to model the behavior of particles or people, represented as cells. For instance, cell devs has been used for modeling CO2 production and dispersion in a room. More relevantly, it has been used to adapt the susceptible infected recovered model to work spatially to study factors of viral spread. Coming now to the main topic, the proposed spatial model built to tackle the issues discussed previously. The model is built as a cell devs with nine different cell types, including air, impermeable walls, chairs, spreader or index cells, receiver cells, and infected individuals. The cell states keep track of time, cell type, the number of viral particles in the cell, the airflow direction, and some variables used for calculating the appropriate number of particles to emit or diffuse to neighboring cells. A function uh, calculates the number of viral particles that the current cell will receive from its neighbors, taking into consideration the number of particles sent to it by the neighbors, as well as the amount of airflow and direction. If the cell is a spreader, we also take into account the shed variable of the mask being worn, while if the cell is a receiver, we take into account the efficiency of the mask instead. So let's talk a little bit about the experimental setup using the model proposed. The model was initially built and verified using a configuration of tables and chairs found in a case study on an outbreak occurring at a restaurant. The outbreak occurred when an index dining at the restaurant infected nine other diners around them. The model was built to match the arrangement of tables and chairs in the restaurant and then validated by comparing the positions of uh, resulting infected cells to the positions of the diners in the restaurant. After that, a number of scenarios were built to investigate the effects of masks on the spread of viral particles spatially. The figure on the right shows an example of a scenario where there is a spreader or index cell uh, in the middle in red and 53 receiver or susceptible cells in yellow. The brown cells represent tables and the blue are active ventilation blowing air away from them. In the first set of scenarios, all individuals in the restaurant, whether they are spreaders or receivers, are set up to use the same mask type. This results in four scenarios, uh, one for each mask type of cotton, surgical, incorrectly fitted N95 respirator, and correctly fitted N95 respirator. The second set of scenarios has the spreader cell using a different mask type from the receiver cells. All scenarios start with the tables fully occupied with one spreader cell near the middle of the environment and the remaining 53 chairs occupied with susceptible receiver cells. Here's an example of a visualization of a completed simulation sped up since the real-time visualization would take almost two hours. Each visualization shows the type of cell on the left as we discussed in the previous slide, but you can also see the yellow cells turning green over time indicating that they have become infected. 
The concentration of viral particles in the air in the environment can be seen in the middle here, where the darker the shade of red, the higher the concentration of particles. Finally, on the right, we can see the concentration of inhaled particles by the receiver cells. So as the simulation progresses, we can see that some receivers inhale a high number of viral particles and turn into infected or green cells when the number reaches a certain threshold. Here's an example of some results from the first set of scenarios at three different points in time in the simulation. Specifically, we're looking at the results of the scenario where none of the individuals are wearing masks. The view at the top is at the point of the first viral particle emission. We can see that the first viral spread reaches six cells above the index. The view in the middle shows the state of the simulation at the midpoint of the scenario after 52 minutes. Around 23% of the environment has a significant concentration of viral particles, and nine receivers have inhaled enough uh, particles to become infected as, and turn green, as you can see here. The view below shows the end of the state at the end of the simulation at 114 minutes. Almost a third of the environment contains viral particles, and a total of 12 receivers had become infected with six more nearing the infection threshold. Here you can see an example of some results from the second set of scenarios, focusing on the final state of the simulation. These are all from simulations where the spreader is not wearing a mask, but the receivers are wearing a different type of mask in each. The spread of the viral particles in the environment is same as in the last example, since the only thing affecting the spread is the shed of the mask worn by the spreader. I've highlighted the receiver cells that would have been safe from infection had they worn more effective masks. The scenario where receivers are correct, wearing correctly fitted N95 respirators ends with nine infections. The scenarios where the receivers are wearing either incorrectly fitted N95s or surgical masks end with a total 11 infections. Since these two cells highlighted here were more exposed to the viral particles due to the lower mask efficiency. There is one more infection in the scenario where the receivers are wearing cotton masks for the same reason. Here are the full results graphed. We can see that for situations where the spreader is wearing an N95 respirator, whether fitted correctly or not, we have no infections and no receivers have inhaled viral particles. This is due to the very low shed values of both configurations of N95 respirators at 5% when fitted incorrectly and 0% when fitted correctly. The viral particle spread is low enough at the end of the simulation that no particles had been inhaled by any receivers. In fact, the number of particles was so low that they do not show up in the visualization. As for the rest of the data, we can notice that in the case of the spreader not wearing a mask, although there is a drop from 12 cells infected down to 9, depending on the mask worn by the receiver, we see a much larger drop when the spreader wears a cotton or surgical mask. This is also true for the number of cells that have inhaled viral particles. There is a full table of results provided in the paper, including the percentage of the area reached by the viral particles in each case. Also included are visualizations of the rest of the scenarios as well. So just for some conclusions for our presentation, we presented a model that simulates viral spread spatially in a 2D indoor environment. We built the model to consider the efficiencies of different face mask types on the viral spread. Our model allows for rapid prototyping and simulating different environments quickly, since a simulation of almost two hours takes only around eight minutes to complete. The results show that more emphasis should be placed on the type of mask being worn by the index of the spread or someone with a suspicion of having the virus than the type of mask being worn by susceptible people trying to protect themselves. Thank you for listening.